Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to very exciting day number three of Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge 2020 tournament online uh, organized as a part of the Magnus Carlsen uh, tour. Um, and this is a rapid time control tournament and I would like to show you one of the games from uh, round three and also at the end I will show you the other games, at least the scores. Uh, the final standings and who qualified to the quarterfinals because this is gonna be very very decisive day and also the pairings uh, in the quarterfinals so without further ado uh, let's see this game uh, we have Hikaru Nakamura number one in blitz with the legendary ranking 2900 can you imagine that's number one in the world. However, this is the rapid time control. So Hikaru Nakamura is number 18 in the world with the ranking 2829. But so far uh, he was leading the tournament. So definitely he is very well prepared. Uh, and also he has a lot of experience in online chess as he has one of the most popular uh, Twitch channels, uh, chess channels where, you know, uh, he practice every day, so he's definitely very, very well prepared. Uh, and his opponent for today, Jan Krzysztof Duda, number 16 uh, in the world in rapid time control and his ranking 2774. Jan Krzysztof Duda is from Poland and he's gonna play as black and Hikaru Nakamura opens with e4. We have c5, Sicilian defense and now knight f3, d6 and not d4. That would be the, the main line of Sicilian defense. Uh, Hikaru always likes to go for some sidelines and he played bishop on b5 less popular move uh, but still quite popular canal sokolski attack uh, and for very important reason bishop on d7 is the main line here and after exchanging the game can continue however uh, knight on c6 and knight on d7 is also possible and knight on d7 was played by duda uh, and here after d4 c takes on d4 queen d4 as the knight can't jump and kick the the queen uh, is the most popular line again uh, hikaru nakamura deviates from the main line and he play bishop on a4 keeping this fork but also the bishop can't be easily kicked now so duda continue on the king side so we have knight on f6 attacking the pawn and now hikaru doesn't care about this pawn he plays castle and now can this pawn be taken actually can but it's very very dangerous knight on e4 rook e1 knight f6 d4 and what would you play as black if you go for, you know, some very Sicilian move like e6, this is actually losing because d5 and now this pawn is under attack and it's it's very, very difficult to defend. For example, e5, knight e5 now. Uh, and and you cannot take this this knight. If you take this knight, you're gonna, you know, fall into the, into the losing position. You're gonna lose the material and the game. So after a d4, black would have to take on, the, on d4, but it's still not really better. Uh, e6, knight b5, and uh, white's gonna get the back the material. Uh, and also, black cannot castle, and uh, who would like to play this position, you know, on the, on the top level, uh, you know, against super grandmaster. That is just, just disaster. That's lost position for black. Uh, so e4, of course, uh, cannot be taken. Uh, we have a6, now preparing b5. Uh, and c4 would be a threat, trapping the bishop. Uh, this is why we have c4. And this is actually called Marozzi bind. Uh, c4 and e4, these two pawns control d5. Very important in Sicilian defense because uh, black usually want to unleash all the power of the pieces with the moves like e6 and followed by d5. Open the diagonals, open the files and, and they continue very, very active game. However, with c4 and e4, it's very, very difficult. So Duda goes for g6. We have knight on c3 now defending e4 uh, and bishop on g7. 
we have h3 uh, controlling g4 now so after for example bishop on e3 this knight cannot jump and you know harass the bishop so that would be annoying and also making a space breathing space for the king just in case if something going on on the first rank uh, we have castle by duda d3 opening diagonal for the for the bishop and now rook on b8 preparing of course b5 uh, rook on b1 and here uh, black usually this is still the theory uh, plays uh, knight on e8 with the idea of remaneuvering the knight to to e6 and sometimes uh, I, I will just show you one of them the variation bishop on e3 and then knight on c7 now bishop d7 uh, bishop d7 d4 uh, fighting for the center knight on e6 inviting actually d5 uh, and after queen on d2 let's say uh, rook e8 that's uh, of course everybody knows the idea with the bishop on h6 so it's good to uh, move the rook so if bishop goes to h6 the the bishop can go to h8 as well uh, and then d5 knight c7 and the game can continue in the spirit of the king's indian defense very very similar structures with the c5 d6 um, and so on so uh, as you see this was played before however here duda goes for queen on a5 queen on a5 uh, and here bishop on d2 a little bit misplacing the bishop however now this knight can jump with tempo and even attack e7 that would be pretty annoying so queen would have to go back to d8 which would not make much sense so we have queen on c7 and here naka doesn't even bother to uh, improve the position uh, of the bishop for now for example to e3 or f4 that would be more natural and it plays a3 definitely uh, preparing b4 we have e6 by duda and now b4 as planned uh, and b6 we have b takes on c5 b takes on c5 and now queen c2 so fighting um for the for the open b file but naga has the two rooks connected already uh, and duda is still you know lack in development of the rook so here is the problem so first duda want to uh, block the open file we have knight on b6 and also asking naka do you want to exchange the bishop for the knight you're gonna lose the the bishop pair maybe that would be good for me uh, naka is not interested we have bishop on b3 and knight f on d7 unleashing this bishop that's quite dangerous piece now so uh, what naka wants to do is exchange the dark square bishops so we have knight on e4 now uh, attacking this knight but also preparing bishop on c3 duda is not interested in uh, exchanging the knight so we have knight on a8 uh, but he doesn't have much choice with bishop on c3 uh, he actually has to uh, exchange the bishops uh, otherwise the king would be on on g7 uh, less safe definitely so bishop on c3 uh, we have knight on c3 and only now knight a goes back to b6 so we have very very similar position and now naka said okay my queen is already uh, done everything what could be done on the queen side let's go uh, to the king side uh, we have bishop on b7 by duda queen on h6 and now knight on g5 with the checkmate idea is coming pretty pretty simple idea okay and and pretty simple threat uh, duda of course reacts so we have rook f on d8 uh, knight on g5 and uh, knight on f8 defending h7 and here we have f4 f6 kicking the knight so knight f3 and white already have the pawn developed on f4 so uh, that was with tempo and uh, but how to crack the position of black because black developed this very nice formation phalanx formation of the pawns and it's not easy you know to start to attack it now we have bishop on c6 by duda so improving the position of the bishop now bishop controls this diagonal for example um a4 so the knight can jump maybe not now but but later if the if the minor pieces are moved uh, but also uh, this is possible so bringing the the bishop for the defense just if needed uh, and also opening the b file not blocking okay so then if the knight is moved 
uh, then black can try to control the b file uh, so we have queen on h4 attacking one of the of the pawns on f6 and now queen g7 defending but also putting the queen on this diagonal and look at this knight this knight is undefended piece so uh, we have rook f on e1 by nakamura and here actually not f5 which could be very very nice move by uh, by young Krzysztof duda uh, and then uh, rook b on c1 probably would have to be played uh, and after rook on e8 black can decide uh, where to play so for example if white would like to you know uh, open the e file black are ready to take care of the of the e file but also black can actually double the rooks on the b file uh, and be active there so uh, that would be pretty interesting position especially this bishop would be very active here uh, with a lot of pressure uh, on e4 together with the pawn so uh, that's another idea so this was possible however uh, young krzysztof duda has different idea rook on d7 so he want to double the rooks uh, we have queen on f2 and now rook d on b7 so double the rooks on the open file and now bishop a2 preparing uh, for the storm on the open file uh, we have f5 now attacking the knight and something has to definitely be done d4 this was played by naka uh, we have f takes on e4 knight takes on e4 and here we have the critical moment of the game what would you play as black black has pretty nice position very promising position just have to find the the good move so the good move here is bishop on e4 bishop on e4 very very important move and after rook on e4 knight on a4 you see the difference now the rooks are disconnected that is the first issue here uh, black already have the very dangerous fork here uh, it's still on the board somewhere here uh, so what white would have to play is one option is something like rook on b7 uh, and then after rook on b7 queen c2 because because rook on b2 is coming anyway so queen on c2 with the idea of taking the knight exchanging this way and after queen on b7 the the bishop doesn't go anywhere especially the rook is under attack so rook on e3 and only now take the rook and white doesn't have much choice white actually have to try to exchange the queens if not the queen gonna penetrate the the first rank and that's gonna be very very unpleasant for white so that's one of the option but also after knight on e4 if uh, if queen on c2 is played immediately then still rook on b1 bishop on b1 and now c takes on d4 rook takes on d4 and the position is very very complex very complicated and it's difficult to say you know uh, what is going on here it's definitely uh, very rich in some tactical hits position and that would be that would be very very interesting so this what duda should play bishop on e4 but he didn't play that he played knight on a4 immediately and there is a huge difference now because hikaru goes for rook on b7 we have rook on b7 and now d5 this bishop supports the pawn on d5 so this is the problem d5 uh, and now if e takes on d5 c takes on d5 bishop has to move so d7 and queen h4 and look at this the pawn is under attack and it cannot really be defended if the rook tries to defend queen can go to d8 and that's just you know that's just terrible position for black it just lost totally lost rook on b8 also doesn't save the day because of course knight d6 and all the position collapse so uh not possible do that try rook on b2 with attack on the bishop and on the queen uh, we have queen on h4 and now e takes on d5 
And now, before taking the pawn on d5, first knight on f6 with check by Hikaru Nakamura, so we have king on h8, and only now c takes on d5, and now the bishop is under attack. Where to move the bishop? All the squares are controlled, so uh, the bishop doesn't have much choice. We have bishop on b5, but now feel free to pause the video and find the winning continuation for white. This is a, a very nice tactic. Uh, quite complicated, but but very nice to find. You will be very, very satisfied if you find the continuation. While I enjoy my cup of tea. Ready? So, first the idea. If you, if you didn't find it yet, uh, then maybe I will give you a little hint. So, white would like to checkmate on h7, but there is a defender. So, uh, how to deflect the queen? So, the idea is to move the rook to e8, capture the knight, and now if the queen, you know, goes to, to f8, then we would have a checkmate. The problem is the bishop controls e8. Okay? You see the, the idea already? Bishop on c4, deflecting the bishop, and now bishop has nowhere to go, and rook on e8 is coming, so the bishop takes or doesn't, doesn't matter, because this bishop gonna take on b5. So, Duda takes on c4, which is actually the, the best move, but it's still losing move, and we have rook on e8. What now? Checkmate is coming, of course, that this is the idea. We have h5 by Duda, and now, very, very simple, knight on d7, attacking this knight twice. So, uh, white gonna win the knight and then checkmate the opponent. And now, if queen on d7, it doesn't work because rook on f8 with check and then checkmate is coming. How? King h7, queen f6, you see already? Queen g7, yes, it's defense, but now knight g5, king h6, and now here is the checkmate as the knight uh, is defended by the pawns. So, uh, queen on d7 definitely doesn't work, uh, so do that try bishop on d5. Um, giving back the material, the, the minor piece here, we have rook on f8, and now bishop g8. So, trying to, you know, uh, hide in the corner, you know, defend the pieces, and maybe to play with these two passed pawn. Uh, that would be good plan, if not queen on d8. And after this move, uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda resigned the game. He gonna lose the, the bishop and actually this is forced checkmate so he cannot do anything about that. The, the king gonna be a checkmated. As you see it's even cannot escape here so uh, that's just losing position and uh, he resigned the game. And I would like to show you the, the scores from other games. So round 9 as you see uh, all draws but Jan Krzysztof Duda that was not his, his best tournament especially day 3 uh, he just lost two games. Uh, but Daniel Dubov and Alireza Firuzia also were in very very bad situation and they just draw uh, in round 9. Then we had round 10. Uh, and here more decisive games, as you see Alireza Firuzia won his game and Daniel Dubov won against Magnus Carlsen. Magnus Carlsen uh, in the end game actually he just blundered the piece and, and resigned and uh, that was also pretty amazing. But Daniel Dubov played a very very nice game with the Philidor defense and and he did very well magnus carlsen after the game said that yeah he deserved to lose this game and uh, yeah he blundered the piece but even he if not then probably he would lose or maybe could try to save the game but but yeah he deserved to, to lose uh, and this game hikaru nakamura won against Jan krzysztof duda and uh, yu yang yi uh, won against wei yi uh, and also Alexander Grishuk in the last round won against Wei Yi, Jan Krzysztof Duda uh, draw and all the draws. And the most important game of the day, Alireza Firuzia versus Magnus Carlsen. Alireza Firuzia actually if he wins, then he had the chance to, to qualify to top 8 players, to the quarterfinals. Uh, and Magnus Carlsen, uh, he needed a draw. 
however, as you see, Magnus Carlsen won and he qualified. Uh, but that was very, very shaky qualification. Alireza Firuzia was so close, but uh, couldn't do it. Uh, and here are the standings after three days. Uh, as you see, Hikaru Nakamura just dominate the tournament. Sergei Karyakin uh, just after. And then uh, we had uh, four players who are qualified with six points. Yu Yangi, Wesley So, Magnus Carlsen, Ding Liren. And Daniel Dubov managed to jump today. He won the games um, and then he has five and a half points. Levon Aronian also have five and a half points. And Alexander Grishuk almost, almost. But he had worse score um, against Dubov and Aronian. So uh, he just couldn't do, do it. Alireza Firuzia, as you see, if he win that game, he would have five and a half points and Magnus Carlsen with five points couldn't qualify. That was very, very exciting. Uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda way he uh, didn't do as well. So these are the final standings and now quarterfinals. Uh, Hikaru Nakamura gonna play against Levon Aronian and then Magnus Carlsen, Wesley So. Uh, and in another half, Yu Yangi, Ding Liren, Chinese pair, and then Daniel Dubov, Sergei Karyakin, also a Russian pair. So we are sure in semi-finals we will have uh, at least one Chinese, actually only one Chinese and only one uh, Russian. Uh, and yeah, that's all for today. If you like this video, press like, and for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss other games from Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge 2020, Press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.